Hey guys, it's Robin, and you're listening to the Live Life Balance Podcast. My heart is full knowing that you're here today, prioritizing you and your wellness. This podcast is for women looking for an authentic, supportive community to learn about wellness from all angles and who want to just feel their best. I'll be your guide pointing you to ideas and tools that you can experiment with to find what works for you because we all bring different experiences and knowledge to the table. (laughs) No pun intended. Health is not a one size fits all. By feeling our best, we're able to show up in our purpose and that allows us to live the most joyful life even in the most challenging times. Together, we're going to grow by learning to align ourselves and taking some simple, actionable steps that feel right for you. We're going to talk about self-care. We'll talk about nutrition, daily toxins. We'll talk food swaps. Uh, We'll definitely be talking about mindset and reframing our thoughts because it's so important. I hope that you leave today feeling more empowered and at ease. And I hope that you can take one or two small steps to be able to create the you that you want to be. Are you ready for all the possibilities? If you said yes, say, I am ready. Now let's get into it. Hi everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm so excited. Today I have on Katie and she is somebody that I met in a course that we were doing together and we just really align with each other. She is into yoga, meditation, mindfulness. Um, She is someone who lives with chronic pain condition and she is into um, information. Um, She's health enthusiast and she's got a child um, with some mental health health struggles and she's starting a new podcast and so i really just wanted her to have her on our show today so that we can just have a conversation about parents and teens and our kids and what we find valuable to ourselves so welcome 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 katie how are you thank you robin thank you for having me i'm good um i will tell you a little bit about katie but then i really i'm going to jump in and just let katie kind of um talk to you. Um, She's a mom, she's a seasoned nurse, she's a yoga teacher, and she's a host of a soon-to-be-released podcast, Mom on the Verge. Katie has been passionate about all things health and wellness from a very young age. However, after battling postpartum depression after the birth of her first child, becoming a chronic becoming a chronic migraine sufferer in her mid-30s and parenting a teenager with significant mental health struggles. She was forced to examine the impact of mental health that mental health has on her physical health and how intimately those two things are connected. Taking a deep dive into the mind-body connection, Katie became a certified yoga instructor, a regular meditator, and a warrior for improving mental health. Katie believes in the power of authentically sharing our truth to help heal ourselves and others, the importance of community and how love and compassion can be spread outward like a a ripple in a pond to create a kinder, safer, and more equitable world. In her free time, Katie enjoys practicing yoga, hiking, hanging with her kids, husband, and reading all things that are spiritual. Um, I will drop in the show notes where you can um, reach out to Katie um, later if you want to get to know her a little bit better. Um, But let's just kind of get into it. The first thing I wanted to um, ask you is Mom on the Verge. Um, If you want to talk a little bit about what that podcast is going to be about so that the listeners, um, if they're interested in adding a new podcast podcast to their list, um, they can look for you. Okay, so um, so it's looking like I'm going to be releasing it towards the end of July. So um, you can look out for it then. Um, but basically, the podcast is its aim is to build community and improve mental health. And we're going to do that through um, various different ways. I'm going to be having um, specialists come on, um, therapists, uh, mindfulness practitioners, teachers. Uh, people in, I have a woman in her PhD program um, talking about social emotional learning for teachers, um, as well as people who have gone through pretty significant struggles in their lives um, and come out the other side having gained a lot of wisdom 
from those struggles and they're going to share their stories and they're going to um, talk about what they learned and how they got through it and what they used to get through it. Um, and I think, you know, sharing stories is really powerful because it helps us to feel less alone. It helps us to realize that, you know, there are other people going through what we're going through and we don't, we don't have to feel so isolated. And so I really want to highlight a lot of people's stories in hopes that other people will connect with those stories. Um, and it will just help them push through whatever difficult thing that maybe they are struggling to get through in the moment. Um, when I first became a mom, um, I had, as you mentioned in the intro there, um, pretty significant postpartum depression, and it was a really isolating time in my life. And I felt really alone and I felt that I couldn't speak out about it. I couldn't say anything about it. And so if you can't say anything, you can't get support. And I found over the years when I, when I found my voice and started speaking out that people want to be there for you. They want to support you. And they're all having such similar experiences. We're all having these parallel experiences right next to each other, but we're all in our own little containers. And so if we don't, if we don't talk about it, or if we don't open a window and look into somebody else's container, we don't realize that we're actually all experiencing the same things and having yes. the same struggles. Yes. So I just think 100%. it's really, yeah, really powerful to share your truth really authentically and, and be raw and be vulnerable and be authentic because you can help so many people by doing that. It's so interesting because, you know, for whatever reason, we're conditioned to, you know, in some way, shape or form to not always talk authentically or speak our truth. Um, and I don't really know where that comes in to play into life, but it's so eye opening when you actually do start to speak your truth. And then all of a sudden it's like, boom, you align with this person and boom, you align with this person. And you're right. It's like, we're all living these parallel lives. And if we just came together more and I mean, women want to support other women, right? But it's like, everybody is so afraid of, of speaking out and maybe talking about the pain that they've had or that they're going through right now. And it's like, if you just learn to speak to people you feel safe around or whatever, however that looks for you, the amount of support that you get really does change the trajectory of how you deal with a certain situation. And so I think your podcast is going to be amazing. I love um, the topics that you're going to speak on. I love the people that you're going to be interviewing. I think all of those are so important, but I really feel like having people share their stories is going to resonate with so many different women and moms and young adults who are going through things um, where they do really feel alone. So Thank you so much for thinking to create a podcast like this, because I really feel like, especially in this day, we need more relationships and community that feels good to us to help us navigate this crazy life of motherhood. Because honestly, that's what it is. It's like being a mom, there is no manual. Nobody warns you what it's going to be like, because if they did, nobody probably would be a mom, right? Um, but you know, your struggles when they're little are so different than their struggles when you're, when they're big, you know, and it's just every season of life. It's like, you need different villages to come along with you to, to help you make it through it without, you know, feeling so alone. So again, thank you so much for creating that. Oh, um, I heard you mention like the postpartum depression and all of that. And, and I'm sorry that you did feel alone because again, that's such an isolating feeling. Um, and you think, oh my gosh, I'm the only one going through this. And in actuality, no, I'm sure the percentage is, is higher than we even could imagine. Um, but starting a support group for that, for younger women, that's something that I think would be super valuable for, for people who are just coming out of, you know, birthing a baby, because whether you have a very, a lot of postpartum or just a little, or you're just starting, it's, it's just nice to have people around you. Um, talk a little bit about, you know, how you ended up because, you know, it said you were a nurse and how you ended up becoming a yoga teacher. Um, so I became a nurse um, before I had children, but after college. So I had gone to college. I didn't go for nursing. Um, I, I had a Bachelor of Arts in Chemistry is my undergraduate degree. Um, and then I taught high school for a little while. And 
I just felt like that wasn't my path and I was searching for my path and, and I've, I've always been very service oriented and, you know, interested in caring for others. And so I went back to school to become a nurse. Um, and I've never regretted that decision. Uh, I still really love serving my patients and caring for them. Uh, it's, it's an honor to be with people when they are vulnerable and mm -hmm. they do need, you know, they do need your help and to be able to provide that for them is, is really just a gift, a gift to myself. So, um, that was, you know, just absolutely the right decision, but through the years, um, I had my first daughter and, and I struggled with the postpartum depression. Then I had my second child, my son, and I developed chronic migraine and I became very depressed again because of the amount of pain that I was living in. Uh, and so as a result, I really wasn't sure what to do. I um, had been seeing many doctors and trying different medications and I saw alternative medicine and acupuncture and chiropractic and everything that you can, you know, possibly imagine to try to tame this dragon. And it was just, nothing was working. Um, and I reached a point really of desperation where I felt like I didn't want to keep living this way. Um, and so I, I don't know why, but I had an internal voice inside of me say, you need to go to yoga. And yoga is something that I had practiced for um, on and off for years prior to that, but I was never a regular practitioner. I would go for a while and then I would stop and I'd go and I'd stop. And, you know, with young children, it's hard to, to really do anything. <laughs> um, <laughs> but a yoga practice is hard because there's really, you know, it's not like a gym where there's usually a child care center. Um, and so it wasn't something that I had regularly practiced. And can so, I ask you a question? Cause I, I've had this experience. So I'm just curious if maybe you have too, but you know, years ago, probably prior to kids, I would, and even maybe when I had my kids and they were young, I did try yoga and I did it, but it really, it was just an exercise. You know, mm -hmm. it was just a, it was just a way to, to do something, I guess, in movement. Um, but when, you know, I became a little bit older and wiser and like just started to, to care for myself a little bit differently. When I resumed yoga um, in 2020 during the pandemic, the experience has just been so different. Um, did you feel that at all? Like going and then starting again? So yes, I, I yes and no. So okay. I was always a very spiritual person from a very young child. I always had that in me for some reason, it's just the way I was built. Um, so I think I always felt that when I went to practice, I felt it at a much deeper level, um, okay. as I became older, but I will also say, um, and I think a lot of your listeners are probably about the same age as you and I are, and something happens in your forties, uh, mm -hmm. you just start changing and you start, turning inward more and start reflect, reflecting more. Um, and there were books that I had read and shows I had watched and podcasts I had listened to that I just couldn't understand what they were talking about. I was like, I don't, right. what are you talking? I don't understand right. <laughs> what you're saying. <laughs> and then uh, one great example is Eckhart Tolle. I don't know if you were uh -huh. familiar with him or your yep. listeners are familiar with him. And um, I had read one of his books and I really tried so hard to get through it. I was in my probably late twenties, early thirties. And I just, I could not grasp what he was talking about. And I went back to it Okay. And all of a sudden I was like, oh my gosh, yes, yes. Like I get it. <laughs> I get it. Yes, yes, yes. Like, I hear what you're saying now. So, you know, they say when you, when the student is ready, the teacher appears. So I That's think, right. you know, I think there's a component of that too. So did I feel that, that depth of, you know, of the practice earlier on, I felt it at a much shallow, much more shallow depth. That's than a good way to put I, it. Yeah. Yeah. Then I felt it going back to it. And even now, this many years later, I've become I've been a regular practitioner now for almost 10 years. You know, I feel it at a much deeper level than I felt it 10 years ago when I started. So it's interesting, like being um like a yoga teacher now, you probably see people coming in at all walks of ages, you know, of life and seasons. And you're, you know, it's like you can relate to them in some way, shape, or form because you've been in all of those, you know situations stages. yeah stages. stages so yes the thing uh, about yoga is that often people come 
for the physical practice that mm-hmm. what we call the asana, the asana is the, you know, the physical postures that you take. Mm-hmm. Um, and I call that the gateway, right? Like that's what gets you in the door because you want, you want the physical postures and some people will stay there and that's fine. But a lot of people, if they come regularly, the postures become secondary to the, all the other benefits they receive from being there. Yeah. For me, I mean, me personally, yoga has been honestly just a way to, to connect breath with movement. But by doing that and slowing my system down, it really allows me to have clarity and connect to what is my higher being, which is God. And so it kind of gives me space in my mind to have the downloads that I need to get and the alignment that I need and just whatever, you know, I might not have gotten because my brain was going and so busy, you know, I might not have done, had that connection and had those thoughts. And so I try and, and look at it as a practice for me to, to not only get the movements and the postures and the core and the, all that stuff, but honestly, as a way to connect to my higher being so that I'm coming into my space in my day in a much more level ground, you know, with mm-hmm. intention and just a different mindset, to be honest. Yeah. So, um, so I choose to do it in the morning. I know some people do it in the afternoon, at night, whatever, but um, for me, that's how it resonates with me. Um, and I think that's true for so many people, what you're saying. And I, and I think it's, in my experience, it's dual fold. So it's, it is exactly what you're saying, mm-hmm. but it's also where I reconnect with myself. Because mm-hmm, right. as women, we're, we're pulled in so many directions. We are mm-hmm. partners, we are mothers, we are, if we're working outside the home, we are daughters, we are, you know, the culture tells us we have to be certain things and do certain things and look like certain things and all the things, right? So we're, we're constantly getting input and messages as to who and what we should be and want and do. Mm-hmm. And that is that quiet sacred space is a place to shut all the noise down and return to self return home um and so the word om is 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 a mantra you know that we use in, mm-hmm. in yoga and those two letters in the word in in the word home om is om um and to return home to self to really receive the downloads like you're saying and what, what do I want? What do I need? What Mm -hmm. is my most authentic self and how can I discover that here and then take it off the four corners of the mat into my everyday life? Everyday life. Yeah. Yeah. I like that analogy. Yeah, for sure. That's a good thing. Um, with one of the things, um, you were talking about, um, mindfulness, how, how do you take or what do you have for tools for people listening that are looking to become a little bit more mindful of themselves and what where they are at you kind of in a day-to-day do you have certain tools that you use um, that you like i do i have so many um some of the i guess if your listeners are more beginners like some of the more beginner tools would be the breath. Okay. So your breath is definitely a gateway to mindfulness. So really just any time in your day, when you feel a little anxious or angry or any emotion that you'd rather not be experiencing at that particular moment, (laughs) um, you can go to your breath. And if you feel comfortable, you close your eyes and you literally just concentrate on your breath, moving in and out of your body. And you may feel it in your nose. You may feel like cool air entering your nose as you inhale and warm air exiting your nose as you exhale. You might feel a rising and falling in your chest or a rising and falling in your belly. Wherever you feel that sensation the strongest is where you should place your attention. And if you close your eyes and you just do that for a minute, you'll be amazed at how different you feel. I have, um, I do a lot of reading and research and, you know, I'm very big on like, um, the fight or flight and Mm -hmm. parasympathetic and not, and I really feel like breathing for myself and my family and my kids. Um, mostly it's like 
that can really switch them from being in that sympathetic fight or flight to bring them back to the parasympathetic. So I think, you know, what you're saying, if, if you've never tried breathing before, if you've never tried any of the different breathing techniques, cause there are a lot out there. So again, it's, mm -hmm. it's finding what works for you, but I love the way Katie just said, like, where you feel it in your body is where you need to put your attention. So you can obviously look up different breathing tool, tools. There's like um, the box breathing and there's the belly breathing and then there's breathe in and hold it and let release. For me, like when I am in a heightened triggered state, you know, where I'm feeling um, less, not like I want to be feeling, I do the breathe in, the hold it and the breathe out. And just by doing that, it really, I feel a shift, you know, in the, the trigger, tr like triggering me or just being able to come back down. So again, if you're a new listener or if you're a listener and you're new to this, you know, check out some of the breath work strategies. Um, we can even drop some in the um, show notes so that if you're new to it, I'll give you a couple of links um, based off maybe something Katie might have, or I can find something um, that can show you um, some breath work tools that you might be able to experiment with because this is all, all about doing what's right for you and your body. Yes. Um, all right. Absolutely. So what's something else? So another breath technique that works really well is, mm -hmm. um, and I will mention also that part of my podcast at the end of every podcast, I will okay. be giving you a mindfulness technique. So every, oh, good. every week, yeah, there'll be just like a little tidbit that you can, you know, try on for size and see if it fits into your life and how it makes you feel. Um, but another really great one, and it's, you know, scientifically proven to get you out of fight or flight is to breathe out longer than you breathe in. So you can count okay. and you can breathe in, let's say for a count of four and breathe out for a count of six. You don't have to use those exact numbers, whatever, you know, is comfortable in your body for breath counts, just as long as your out is longer than you're in. So, okay. you know, several rounds of breathing in and breathing out at a much slower, longer pace, you will absolutely decrease that sympathetic nervous system and get much more relaxed. Another one would be your senses. So, so basically, you know, in yoga philosophy, and I, I really think actually in just like generalized therapy, they teach you this too, um, is that all suffering occurs because our mind is not in the present moment. Yes. You're either thinking about something that happened in the past, or we are preparing for something that's going to happen in the future, but we're not here and now. And it can be really hard. The, the mind is crazy, right? In yoga, we call it the monkey mind. It never stops moving. It's always climbing around. It's just, ah, it won't stop, right? Right. So how do we stop it? How do we, and, and we can't stop it. That's honest. No. Truth. God's honest truth. The truth is that the brain was created to think. That was what it is evolved over all of these many years to do is to think. So you wouldn't ask any other organ to not do what it's supposed to do. You don't tell your heart to stop eating, <laughs> right? You don't tell your kidneys to stop filtering urine. You don't tell your stomach to stop digesting, right? We don't tell it to that, but we want to close our eyes and say, stop thinking brain. Like, no, it doesn't, it doesn't work like that. The brain is going to think. So you have to accept that. That's number one. Um, go into a, a, you know, a space of acceptance that I know I'm not going to be perfect at this. I know that even if I try to focus my attention on something, I'm going to, my attention is going to drift. It's going to wander and it's going to wander frequently and that's okay. I'm just going to bring it back when I notice. Um, but what you can do to try to help you with a little centering is using your five senses. So we experience the world through our senses. And so if we want to come into the present moment, we can use our senses to bring us there. So there's a, a technique called five, four, three, two, one. And have you heard of this? Yes, I call it, I mean, I've, uh, I talk to people, it's, I call it grounding, grounding yourself. Grounding. Yes, yeah. yes. So you can do this in any way you want, but you use your five senses. So you might say, I'm going to look for five things. So that's your sight. You know, I'm going to look around and I notice, oh, that's a beautiful tree. And, um, oh, that person's walking their dog or, oh, look, there's some lint on the floor that needs to be cleaned up. Yeah. <laughs> whatever, you know, whatever you notice with, you know, with your eyes, five, then maybe four things that you can hear, um, three things that you can feel, um, two things, what am I missing that you can smell and maybe one thing that you're tasting. 
Mm -hmm. Um, and that will, you know, if you're in a really tumultuous internal state, it just kind of quickly helps you bring you into this present moment and the present moment. Split. It's a split moment. (laughs) It's a split moment, right? It's, it's never the same. It's constantly changing, but it's the only place we really have. And it's the only place that we can take effective action from. Yes. So if, if you want to be more productive and you want to be more, less stressed and more peaceful, you, you need to do your best to be in the present moment and then have self-compassion when you realize mm-hmm. that you're not. Right. And the whole thing about like the monkey mind and moving and their mind's supposed to, you know, I feel like um, people who are either new to meditation or haven't really gotten into meditation or tried it and are like, not for me. A lot of times it's because they don't understand truly how to meditate and people think I can't sit quietly for 20 minutes. What are you doing? Like, and the, the goal of meditation isn't to quiet your mind completely all the way without anything happening, but it is just a way to, to bring awareness to where your mind is. And if you wanting to focus on something, you know, and your mind starts wondering somewhere else, like you said, you just bring it back to whatever it was at that moment that you're meditating on and that can be different in a lot of different ways and there's lots of different people who teach meditation so if you are someone who's interested in meditation if you look up one person and you try it and they don't line with you that doesn't mean all meditation won't work for you just Mm -hmm. hop around until you find and it's taken me years to find um somebody who truly could affect me, I would say, or get to me or like help me figure it out. And Kathy was, was it, you know, she was the one person that, but since then I've dabbled in a couple of other things. Um, and I'm able to receive it differently because I've, I now know what works for me, I guess. So again, if you're someone that's out there and you're new to all of this, experimentation is, is my best advice, you know, for any practice that you're just starting, you know, and it doesn't, it's kind of like, you know, when you eat cereal, I don't know why this just came to my mind, but it's like not everybody likes one particular cereal and there's a bunch of cereals to try. So it's the same thing. It's like you got to try different things on to see what feels good for you ultimately. Yeah. And it's it's not even just the different person who's uh, presenting the meditation, but there are many forms of meditation. Yes. So there are many different ways right. of focusing the mind. So ultimately, you know, meditation is an attempt to focus the mind And you can do that through mantra. You can do that by focusing on the breath. You can do that through visualization. There are many, many different forms. You can do it through breath work. Um, Some people are like, I cannot sit still. There's no way that I can just sit there. There's moving meditation. There's yoga is a a moving meditation. I think for me, Kathy's more of the visual. She is. She's And so that's, I think, why it resonated so much with me is because it it always told my mind what to do. So I was mm-hmm. still doing something. Yes. Um, so it wasn't, it didn't go stray off as much. And I think I liked that because I wasn't having to think about, okay, am I going out and coming back and going? It was just like, so I think for me personally, the visualization was a good um, type of meditation for, for myself mm-hmm. to, to be able to have the impact that I wanted meditation to have for me. Right. Absolutely. And that's, that's what we're saying, right? So you, you got to go towards what right. works for you and where you f- find that piece. But I mean, visualization for me is actually really hard. I just am not a good visualizer, right. um, but I still, I still try to do it a lot. Mm-hmm. And actually I've been trying to do it more in my life because I think there are a lot of benefits to it. So when you're starting out, I would say go with the one that feels the easiest for you because you're new and you're just trying to learn right. this and get a, get a rhythm going. But then as you progress, you might decide you want to challenge yourself and try to do some of these forms that are harder for you um, because it'll help you grow. Anytime you do something that's harder for you, it'll help you grow. So, um, you know, just with start small, start with easy, start with a short time frame um, and start with what speaks to you the most. And the other piece I guess I wanted to add to that was that every time your mind wanders and you become aware of the fact that your mind wandered, it's actually a gift mm-hmm. because you get to see what your mind was thinking. So, you know, we are not our thoughts. We are not our mind. We are the witnesser. We are the observer of our thoughts and our right. mind. So if you are not paying attention, if you're in autopilot, you're having all these thoughts. It's not that you're not having them. They're all there. 
you just don't, you just aren't like recognizing that they're there, but they're still impacting you. So when you start becoming the observer of the thoughts and you see that your, your thoughts have drifted and then you're like, oh, look at that thing that I was thinking. It helps you to like understand yourself better. Yeah, that's true know where you are. Like, am I beating myself up? Am I, am I talking negatively to myself? Am I judging myself? Am I judging somebody else? Am I just like an anxious mess? Like thinking about the 24,000 things I have to do after I stand up. Am I stressing about something that really isn't as big of a stressor or I don't need to make it as big of a stressor as it, as it needs or as it seems to be. So yeah, that those are all wonderful, wonderful thought things to think about. Um, and reframing things in a different way that your mind isn't just running off to nothing, you know, it's running off and you're right. We, we have all these thoughts all day long and how many of those thoughts do you even remember? Right. You know, (laughs) and and even though you might not be able to consciously recall them, they are impacting your behaviors. A hundred percent. One of the things that you, I don't think we've talked about yet, but one of the things that you had said to me was, you know, being a nurse and growing up in, like with health, being health conscious and all of this, all the things, the practices, all of the things that you were doing were all physical things. And the the yoga and the other things were not a part of that. And so talk a little bit about that, how that, how including that into your like holistic being um, kind of solidified maybe a, a better like circle instead of just having like a one-sided um health and wellness plan or like lifestyle i guess yeah i mean i think that i i would have in my younger years put health into buckets so there was exercise as a bucket nutrition was a bucket sleep was a bucket um I don't know if I even had any other buckets other than those. Maybe, maybe when I got to me, like in my thirties, I would have said stress management would have been a bucket. <laughs> <laughs> um, but then I realized that I was missing probably the most important bucket, or what I would say is the bucket that holds all the other buckets, mm-hmm. which is my mental health and my spirituality. Now that can be whatever it is for each individual. I don't personally um, partake in any specific organized religion for myself, but we all, you can partake in any form of religion and still have spirituality. Um, And so that was really missing from my life. I had tried to fit into a specific religion for a long time that wasn't working for me. And then I just kind of like threw my hands up in the air and I was like, this, this is not working and I'm not doing it. Um, and I left it behind and it was a huge missing link because it really did impact my mental health. It, I didn't have a way of coping with the difficult things that were coming down the pike. Um, Mm -hmm. in my life. I didn't have a community um, that could help me through those difficult things. I didn't have a way of reframing. I didn't have, um, I didn't have, yeah, internal or external support. Mm -hmm. And that's so important because life is life. There's, it's, it's a constant series of ups and downs. And I don't think anyone escapes this life without facing some pretty significant challenges. And when they come, if you don't have something Mm -hmm. to help you, it's really hard. And Mm -hmm. it limits your ability to get through them in a healthy way. And so that was really missing for me. And um, I want, you know, it's so amazing though, that all of the, you know, challenges that you were facing that that still showed up for you in a time that you were, you had the brain with, you know, and capacity to hear it Mm -hmm. and then do something about it. And so, you know, that's amazing. And I'm glad that you're sharing that because I think a lot of people look at wellness and health as those just little buckets and they do forget some of the other pieces that kind of brings it all together. And so noticing that and then taking action on it really does make a difference um, in 
in your overall well-being, right. not just, you know, certain little buckets. So um, again, for anybody listening, if you're someone who has some little buckets, but does, you know, don't have like all the buckets connected in a way, then that might be something that you should get curious about and, mm -hmm. you know, find mm -hmm. where the, the missing link might be for you. Um, and if that's, in faith and spirituality, then, you know, look into that. If that is um, putting yourself first and taking care of yourself. Um, I think we as moms and Katie and I talked about this earlier, but you, you know, we're, we're, we have all these people telling us what a good mom is and how a good mom should be and what we should do and all of this. And none of that um, talk from others really includes a lot of take care of yourself. Um, and so that's something that with my podcast, um, and I believe Katie has the same, you know, philosophy. It's like, if we can teach people how to put themselves first, they will definitely be able to show up better for their family and the people around them and the people who they're surrounded with. And that takes a little bit of work and effort, but it's definitely worth it in the end um, to be able to show up differently for yourself first and foremost, but then also for your kids. Um, so one of the things, um, do you have anything you wanna to add to that? Um, I just, I fully wholeheartedly agree with you. And I think, I guess the only thing I'd like to add is that I don't think we can fully embrace any of those other buckets until we take care of the big bucket, until we take care of this mindfulness, spirituality, whatever you want to call it, mental health bucket. Because if I'm not feeling good internally, if I'm not feeling good about myself, or I'm super anxious or stressed or, um, you know, worried, all those things. I am going to reach for the bad foods, right? I'm going to crave the sugar and the carbs and, and all those things because I'm trying to fill something. I'm trying to fill a void that is not fillable by food, right? And I'm, I'm not going to sleep well because my mind is churning and churning and churning about all the things that I'm concerned about. And uh, when I think about exercising, I'm, I'm probably pretty drained, right? Because all this internal dialogue, this stress-based internal dialogue is exhausting. And the idea of then going to work out probably sounds pretty in a, like unappealing. Um, so I think that, you know, taking care of this, this whole self, this, this internal world that we have, then helps us take care of ourselves in the more external pieces, the pieces that we see like diet and exercise and sleep. Right. And just to be clear, Katie and I both, you know, had this conversation earlier, you know, neither one of us are against therapies. We're not against medication. Mm -hmm. they, there is a time and place for all of that. And a lot of times those things are needed to be able to then take steps in other areas so that you, know, you have a balance, so you're balanced out a little bit before you can start to really address some of the underlying things um, in the health and wellness. So please remember like if you are dealing with something or if your child is dealing with something and you're dealing with them you know those therapies are super important and those you know practitioners that can prescribe medications they they have a time and a place it's we're just saying to don't forget about the rest of the picture because the rest of the picture really paints something much bigger than than that just that small little perspective Absolutely. I wholeheartedly agree. And as we discussed earlier, I have a daughter who has really struggled and which she has been through a ton of therapy and has been on medication. And I am fully behind all of those methodologies. This is an adjunct. Um, and for some people it's enough. And for other people, it's a nice addition to therapies and medications. Yes. Very good. Um, okay, so lastly, I ask all the people um, that I interview about their non-negotiables because I think that having non-negotiables are really important for each person individually because those are things that we know that are tools and or habits that we've created that make us feel our best. So I'm always curious, because um, I have my own set, but I'm always curious to find out what other people have is their non-negotiable. So in your daily life, mm -hmm. what are just a couple of things that, you know, you've created into habits because you know it and you don't really skip them often, you know, obviously mm -hmm. life happens sometimes, but you, you mainly don't skip them because you know how good it makes you feel. 
So sleep is probably my number one non-negotiable. I do not mess with my sleep. Okay. <laughs> Everyone who knows me knows that sleep is an absolute priority for me. Um, exercise is also a huge non-negotiable for me. Meditation is a big non-negotiable. Um, and when I say exercise, that includes yoga, but it, there are other forms of exercise that I also partake in, but um, that I kind of encompass all of that. Mm-hmm. Um, and healthy eating. I can't, I really can't function at my best unless I am putting good things into my body. So those are all non-negotiables for me. That's awesome. Um, we didn't really talk much about food or anything, but just curious, like what is one of your favorite um, healthy meals that you eat? I love anything curry based. So I love a good oh. chickpea curry. Um, <laughs> I love, um, a good yogurt parfait, which is like berries and nuts and seeds and that kind of thing. So, you know, yeah. I'm, again, yep. busy, busy mom. So things That's are right. I love some good roasted salmon, uh, with veggies on the side or like a bowl. I love a, like a brown rice bowl with like whatever my protein is and my veggies. Um, so I love, I love it. They're all easy. Yeah. They're all quick, but they're, they all sound delicious and I'm hungry. So that yeah. sounds yes. amazing. <laughs> um, well, I just, again, I want to thank you so much for coming on. I'm so looking forward to your podcast. I think that you're going to be able to share a lot of, um, good knowledge and education and support for people, um, that are, you know, in this life of, you know, being a mom and having maybe children, you know, that are struggling in some way, shape or form. I think that your um, guests that you're going to be interviewing are really going to lend to give a lot of good um, education, you know, of different things. And I think, again, the more we can come up with different perspectives and learn different perspectives for ourselves and for our kids, just the more options we have. And, And to be honest, what I have definitely learned over the years is we are we ourselves are the only ones that are our own advocate and advocate for our children. And we have to do the best thing that we know as a parent for ourselves, but also for our kids. And that's using your voice. And that entails learning a lot. So um, I'm super excited. And I definitely will be sharing um, when you're about to go live, I'll share on all my social media. But for all the things we've talked about today, if there's anything that we can link below in the show notes. Um, You can check those out down there. We'll talk a little bit after and and come up with a few things. Um, But until next time, um, I just wanna say, I hope that you guys have a great day um, and a rest of your week goes swimmingly. So we'll talk soon, bye. I loved being here with you today. I hope that you got something from today's mini episode. I'd love to hear what resonated with you. Drop a comment below. And if you feel led to, download this episode and share it with someone that you love that needs to hear this message. To stay connected, check out my Instagram and Facebook pages at Live Life Balance with Robin. Join my newsletter, my blog, or even opt in for my free junk food cleanse sheet at my website, which is www.livelifebalancedwithrobin. And if you're looking to work one-on-one with someone, on your health journey, check out my services page on my website too. Thank you for allowing me to be part of your day. It truly means a lot that you are allowing me to be on your wellness journey with you. Until next time, find peace, love, and light by breathing, being present, and allowing for all possibilities to happen.